Hey, I'm here in Waipahu today to check out a place suggested by my friend called Minasa. So that was a suggestion from Kavehi, thank you. And she says she loves their food. So if you're wondering where it is, it's in the same shopping center as Elena's and La Casita, which I've done a video on when they were across the street. Also Diamond's um, Huli Huli Chicken. And um, we're gonna check it out. All right, I finished placing my order with Minasa, and there's so many things to order that I didn't know what to order. My friend Kavehi swears by the lechon fries, but I'm not feeling the fries, and they're quite expensive. Um, for my opinion, to get fries and lechon on top of it, uh, but they do sell lechon fries, which they're famous for. But I wanted something a little bit more filling um, and samplings of some other things as well. So we're going to start off with an appetizer. They to Shanghai Lumpia. So we'll start off with that. And while I get the food, um, I bumped into a viewer, Ronnie. Thank you so much, Ronnie, and his lovely lady, um, who I didn't get your name, I'm sorry, um, but they were eating there and he stopped and introduced himself. So thank you, Ronnie, for watching my channel. I really appreciate it and for saying hi to me and showing me all the food you're e you were eating. He was having some adobo wings. He showed me he had some lechon, garlic rice, and um, some other things on his table. It looked very great, so I can't wait to taste my food. So this is the Shanghai Lumpia. Uh, they say they're, I think, 10 pieces or so, but obviously they're cut in half. So it's not the full piece, which would be like two of these together. Um, so let's try it. It's hot out of the fryer. It's very hot, and I can smell it. it smells delicious so on the side of your lumpia you got some looks like pickled veg some shredded carrot and some shredded papaya shredded green papaya and your little dipping sauce so let's try it without the sauce first mmm when you look at it it looks quite dry and crispy but when I bit into it just this burst of delicious pork juice just exploded in my mouth. That was good. So it's really juicy meat in there. Let's dip some sauce in there. Wow, that was fabulous. That sauce has, you know, shoyu, obviously. It's shoyu-based, but has a bright kick to it. I'm going to guess it's calamansi, but it's not too sour. But it gives this brightness to the pork that's in the lumpia. And I can say that, you know... These taste really good. The pork is seasoned really well. Uh, it's quite different, so not the frozen kind of lumpia. I hope not, because it's better than any frozen lumpia I've tried. So, you know, the chef there makes really good filling for it. And um, just not dry. It's juicy meat. A lot of meat inside, surprisingly, even though they're tiny. Um, I wish they gave more because it's so delicious. All right, I'm going to try the side here. This is the shredded carrot and the, looks like, green papaya. It's not as crunchy as I thought. They're not crunchy like the pickled veg you would get in a banh mi. But it's much more sour with the vinegar taste, but in a pleasant way. I'm not a fan of vinegar like most people know. But that is actually pleasant where it would cut through the fried, you know, goodness of the lumpia and the pork in there and the fat. So that's a good compliment and a little side palate cleanser with your lumpia. So all in all, very good appetizer. I highly recommend it. The only complaint I have is I wish there was more. All right, off to our next dish. I wish I had endless amounts of stomach space, but I don't. So I can only pick one. And since they're famous for their lechon and I didn't want to get their fries, I had to go with their lechon bowl. You may find their menu very pricey and it is it's a pop-up restaurant they do farmers markets and little food truck things here and there you'll find them there um, but look at this massive bowl you can't complain this is like pretty big hefty bowl I would say this is more than 
three pounds, five pounds maybe, of just massive food. So it's expensive, but you probably could split it with two people or make two meals out of this. Uh, so this lechon looks beautiful. I mean, I can't tell what's in it because there's so many things going on, but it looks beautiful. Looks like it's topped with some creamy kind of sauce, which is interesting. Some purple onion and some microgreens. You've got your pickled ong choy right there. And that same vinegar based pickled vegetable with the carrots. And underneath, she, uh, the lady at the front told me there was the garlic fried rice underneath. And all their bowls come with the garlic fried rice, so it's not plain rice. All right, let's uh, dig in. Take this piece of meat. It's got that white mayonnaise sauce, so it's almost like that uh, mayonnaise kind of sauce that's on sisig, I'm assuming. It's got that nice, crisp outside on the skin. The sauce that's on it is kind of sweet, but the skin is so crispy and delicious. And the meat is quite, you know, moist, it's not dry. Very good lechon. On the top too, it looks like it's sprinkled with a lot of big, thick bacon bits. So this is just pork o'clock all the way through. No if, ands, or buts, pork everywhere. Yeah, that's some smoky bacon just mixed with that lechon. Oh my goodness. Take a little onion with it. I haven't even gotten to the bottom of the rice. I mean, this is just a massive thing of meat. Mmm, so good with the onion. And I think these microgreens here are cilantro, mini cilantros. It is so good. I know a lot of people hate cilantro, but I love cilantro, so that was, wow. The micro cilantro just gives a really big burst in your mouth of cilantro flavor. It's really amazing how such small little greens that are not adult cilantro have more flavor than the actual regular cilantro. And I think the microgreens, they are much more expensive, but it gives a nice presentation to your bowl or, or plate rather than chopping up some cilantro and just throwing it on there. So I think it gives the presentation a very nice, you know, look to it. So I finally got to the bottom to get some rice. So let's give this Filipino garlic fried rice a shot. The garlic flavor is pronounced in there, but it's also got a sweet aftertaste. So a lot of sweetness going on in this bowl. So you got a mixture of sweet, sour, and savory. Very interesting. So I've been munching at this bowl for a while and it's really hard to get to the rice on the bottom, but what I'm trying to tell you is there is massive amounts of meat. So I guess it is worth the price. It is quite pricey, but man, that's a lot of meat in there. A lot of lechon, a lot of bacon as well mixed in there and all the rice is on the bottom. So um, definitely worth it for the quantity of it and the taste is good. All right, let's try this pickled ong choy. That's really crunchy, so it's got a different texture going on, which is nice. I've had it before. They offer it a lot at Thelma's and I thoroughly enjoy it. It's sour, so it cleanses the palate as well, but a little bit more sour than the pickled veg, the carrots and the green papaya that's shredded. But I like the crunchiness of the, these and you can see they're ong choy because they have the hole in the middle. Um, it's a hollow vegetable. Um, really, really refreshing pickled side dish as well. So you got all these things going on. And I think when you get tired of the sweetness of the sauce, you can excite your taste buds with some sour and crunch. So very good side. All in all, that lechon bowl was really great. Great flavors, lots of meat. It's a meat lover's dream. You got the rice on the bottom with the garlic. So if you like garlic, you got that. And you got all the side vegetables and that cilantro to just mix it up a little bit with your taste buds and confuse it in a good way. So it's not boring food, really great, massive amounts of food. So definitely worth it, like I said. Expensive looking when you just look at the menu, but once you see your food bowl and the quantity of it and the quality, you'll be, understand why it's that price. All right, if you're gonna have Filipino food, you gotta have something ube. I love ube, it's one of my favorite flavors for desserts. 
Um, and I like the presentation. Everything in here is presented really well for a just a takeout place. You can also sit there and eat in. Very clean, nice, air-conditioned place. Um, this is the ube churro. So, of course, it's fusion Filipino, so they try to be creative with the Filipino dishes. Got your churro, which is a Spanish or Mexican dish, and the nice little carnation flower on there that matches the color, the purple color of the ube. Pretty ube drizzle and the pretty purple sugar crystals. And I love the banana leaf on the bottom. They also had the banana leaf on the Shanghai Lumpia as well. So very nice presentation, even though I did take out. So let's try it. It's three pieces of ube churros. Delicious. Oh, that was a pre pleasant surprise. The inside has some kind of custard. Usually churros, you don't have a filling, but this one has a filling like custard. Reminds me of the filling in a Long John donut. The inside's creamy and custardy and sweet, and the contrast of the crispy outside is delicious and it's flaky, and the sugar, can't go wrong with sugar, right? It's very, very tasty. I like the texture contrast. Usually you just get the crispy outside and the spongy inside, but the cream in the middle changes it up a lot. I will say though, to be honest, don't really taste a lot of ube. It's just plain sugar and a lot of custard flavor. So if you're expecting ube taste, you know, I'm gonna actually dip it some more in this drizzle that they have here. I don't taste it. It just tastes sweet, but it's very pleasant. It's a very pretty presentation but I don't get the ube taste to me. It's more of the custard overrides everything, but it's fabulous. I get it again. It's freaking bomb. I mean, I love churros. If you don't like churros, there's something wrong with you. You gotta love churros. All right, so that was pretty much the dishes I picked at Minasa. Wonderful flavors. I enjoyed everything. I can't complain. Those churros were the great touch to the end of the meal nice and sweet. Um, I usually don't like sweet things, but lately I haven't been, uh, I've been cutting back and actually during the end of the year, I kind of just do it for fun and to also um, not gain too much weight, but I love beer. I drink beer a lot, but usually around October all the way till around spring, I just totally quit drinking. Uh, once in a while, if it's a special occasion, I might have one or something, but I, I love beer. I can drink a lot of beer. Um, so I just cut everything out. And I noticed when I cut out beer, I guess, cause you're cutting out a lot of carbs, I crave sweet things. And that's not natural for me cause I usually don't like desserts, but that was good. I like the uh, sugary sweet churro. And um, usually around this time at the end of the year and the early spring, I'm probably gonna enjoy desserts more. And then as I get back into uh, going on vacation and stuff. I probably won't like sweets again. I know I'm weird, but that's why if you're wondering and you know, you've seen old videos and say, Hey, you said you don't really like sweet things. That's probably why I'm craving them now, or I enjoy them a lot more because I probably don't eat as much carbs or intake a lot of carbs from the lack of beer, which is a good thing for your liver. You got to give it a break and not drink so much. But anyway, if you're looking for something new and exciting and you love Filipino food and you want to try something that's a little bit fusion but doesn't go way off the rails and do something way too funky with Filipino food, definitely try out Minasa. They do Filipino dishes in a creative way. The chef is obviously Filipino, but they just make it a little bit fancier. They don't really twerk the recipes too much where it would offend anyone or anything like that. It's just kind of more upscale and has a unique taste, yet keeping the traditions of Filipino food. So I enjoyed everything I got and I'm sure the rest of the menu is fabulous. They have fish if you're not into, you know, pork. They also have, you know, the adobo wings like I mentioned and other varieties of things so if you don't eat a certain type of meat they they've got something for you on that menu and if you're wanting to dine in like i said before very clean nice place with tables 
and uh, air conditioned so you can't go wrong if you want to sit in and if you want to take out I just suggest you eat it right away because some of the items you know like the Shanghai Lumpia and the Ube churros are crispy and you want to eat them while they're hot and not let them go soggy so if you're taking out definitely plan to eat it right away so thank you to my friend Kavehi for suggesting this place. I really enjoyed myself. And thank you to Ronnie again for saying hi. And I appreciate you and everybody else that watches my channel. Um, if you do see me around, say hi. Um, sometimes I look all frazzled like today because I came off of work and went straight here because I have to do something on Friday. Usually I film on Fridays and edit it and get it out right away. But I got to do something else. So I'm doing this a little bit early. So anywho, thank you, Ronnie for saying hello. I appreciate you and I hope you have a great trip here. You said you're from California and you're planning to move here so hopefully I'll see you around if you're eating out and if you like this press the like button, uh, subscribe if you're new and join me again next week for another food adventure. I'll see you then and take care everybody and have a great weekend. Peace out.